Hi, this is Real World Audio, and this is the long-awaited uh, video on uh, Cube Audio drivers. Uh, these are uh, drivers made in Poland, and uh, and I think they have done something truly fantastic with these drivers, um, because they have totally re-engineered uh, their drivers, so, so they truly built them from the ground up and it's not just uh, uh, the usual approach that uh, a loudspeaker designer wants a specific uh, parameters from a driver and then they send the plan the demands to a company like SAS or VIFA uh, or, or another company and there the engineers uh, scratch their heads and modify their existing drivers to suit those parameters and then they produce it or if if it's needed to be done on a chip they have it uh, mass produced in China and uh, that's the usual approach and that's how 99% of the drivers are for commercial use no these drivers were totally built by these people who uh, who designed them from the scratch and they did reinvent a lot of things to come up with these drivers so i understand that there's like really severe pricing price tags for these drivers you can look this is their website uh, i'm looking at cube audio's uh, homepage, and and yes they are very 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 expensive but that expense is not just a random number they slapped on it but it reflects the fact that they have been designed from the ground up and they contain technology that, um, that is proprietary to them. So for example, they have reinvented the, uh, the spider. So that's the surround that holds the driver in the back and they use a completely new technology and uh, they describe it here and it's something truly fantastic. Guys, congratulations. This is a stroke of genius. And you see they have done a truly uh, amazing job on, on, the, on the frame. Uh, and and how, how the frame is uh, put together. That is truly something uh, extraordinary and unique. And they give you a lot of mounting holes in the front to give extra solid uh, and stability um, or is it or maybe I might be wrong those might be the holes to mount the structure there um, however what is the truly big thing and that what I want to share with you is that look at the visor cone so basically when you have a full range driver i'm going to use uh, the example of a traditional full range driver the fostex fe204 why this it's because in my void pipes i use this driver and um, now you cannot get this it was uh, in production 20 years ago when i built my void pipe and now they fostex has different models in the 200 series but uh, I'm going to show this to you because this is my baby. So this is how basically all of the full range drivers look. They have a main cone. So this is like 8 inch diameter means the diameter of the basket. So the cone itself is, is smaller. It's, it's like 6.5 inch or something like that. Uh, but that doesn't mean that this is a 6.5 inch driver because when you get a 6.5 inch driver it has a 5 inch cone and so on and for example if you get a 15 inch woofer it only has a 13 inch cone so the cone is always uh, smaller in diameter than the total uh, size of the basket and it's always the total size you get when you size your uh, drivers so basically here in this case we have an 8 inch uh, driver with a visor cone so this is called a visor cone and it's uh, glued together on the former along with the big cone so they move together and they did that because this visor cone is much stiffer than the large cone so it means that that extra stiffness allows it to reproduce 
higher frequencies more accurately than the large cone and that's why when you have the wizard cone that adds quite a bit to the frequency extension of the driver so when you look at here look at this the figure is there uh, so for here the driver is uh, strong until 10 kilohertz and then you can see it weakening but even look at that around 18 kilohertz is still at 90 dbs so it has a uh, output and significant output even at uh, 20 kilohertz and yes it's a little lower than the nominal impedance of the driver but it's still quite significant and when you look at tweeters and super tweeters you often see that uh, beyond 10 kilohertz they start to droop so that's uh, not an unusual thing to see uh, but uh, what i want to say it is that this part of the performance like above uh, 10 kilohertz that it still stay, stays at relatively high level compared to the total output of the loudspeaker that's because of the wizard cone so if we didn't have a wizard cone then from here on we would see a sharp drop in the output so that's the advantage of a wizard cone that we have this extra extension in the high frequencies but it also creates a problem and the problem is that there is interference between the big cone and the wizard cone so as the big cone starts to create those uh, frequency movements and the air is pressurizing here it will bounce off from the wizard cone back into the main big cone and that will create problems so look at this uh, cube audio guys they have found a way how to kintaro uh, my cat is here so they found a way around this issue and and what they did is they added an extra cone between the big cone and and the main visor cone and what that extra cone does it breaks up the waves between the small cone and the big cone and uh, unfortunately i never heard these drivers uh, live uh, partially because uh, they are made two oceans and a continent away from me and <laughs> none of these drivers and speakers have uh, swam across two oceans and crossed the mainland usa to reach here to hawaii so uh, it's it's probably uh, I don't really have much of a chance to hear them unless I fly to Europe. However, I can tell you guys from first-hand experience that this strategy of adding an extra cone there does work. And why? Because my mentor came up with this idea 20 years ago. And, and the way he used uh, that idea back then, he specifically... Uh, had this idea for the loader drivers for the Radoms speaker he did this as a tweak so he uh, took it was very very easy you know those uh, foam coffee cups so he just cut out a, a wizard cone size shape from a foam coffee cup and put it between the loader's uh, wizard cone which is large as, as, as the wizard cone here and the main cone and he used just a piece of uh, of a copper uh, mm, strong uh, wire not, not so strong but just a piece of copper wire and he hung it to the uh, frame of the driver so that it was hung it, it, in, in that case that, that he did it did not move with the cones it was stationary but it had the exact same effect as the cone here is that it broke up the interferences between the wizard cone and the main cone and these, these guys uh, at Cube Audio, they came to the same uh, conclusion. They came, uh, found out the same thing. And, and I'm really glad that they put it in production. And, uh, and yeah, so if you are wondering if whether that extra cone, extra visor there does anything, uh, yes, it does. And uh, I would be really curious how... how it really translates uh, the way they put to get put it together also what they did they added an additional uh, 
uh, visor here in the middle, in the center. That's like, that's the extension of the of the former basically, and that that moves as well. So that adds an additional source of very high frequency because the shorter the diameter, smaller the diameter, the higher the frequency the driver can achieve. So that's why these drivers can go. Uh, to very high frequencies and reproduce them at high energy because of that thing and and that extra visor cone there should give them the ability uh, to to make the mid-range even clearer and and that special spider that they use here to mount the driver it will allow the loudspeaker to reach higher sound pressure levels without uh, distortion so so kudos to you guys at cube audio you have done truly truly phenomenal work at uh, at, at creating fantastic elements and, and and really big leaps um i'm not seeing such big uh, innovations in loudspeaker technology and, uh, and and this is definitively one and, and, and truly special. And, uh, and if you can afford the price, I would say just that that they just done so much and then so special, it does warrant in the case of these drivers to, to support them in their effort. Uh, and they have uh, different uh, sizes. They have 8-inch and 10-inch drivers. And they have uh, regular ferrite magnet versions and neodymium magnet versions. And uh, what do I uh, think about them? Well, I have not heard personally either of them, so I cannot vouch for what their sound is. Uh, however, they were super duper nice and they published the measurements, how these drivers measure in their cabinets in a real world room. So we will be able to have a look at the measurements and uh, I can uh, tell you about my conclusions of those measurements. But uh, even at that level, we stay at, uh, at hypothetical land. And uh, you might wonder oh, whether whether my assumptions and whether reading the uh, parameters, how does that translate to real life? But uh, here uh, I'm sharing you something really special. Actually, Arek has shared with us something really special. So he does have a uh, cube audio. A loudspeaker and 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 uh, he shared a very extensive uh, uh, experiences how he uses them what he thinks of cube audio and uh, and 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 he has a description a little background on on people uh, who uh, who are cube audio so where do they come from and look at that the company's heritage in DIY and uh, and basically they 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 came up from the underground from the audio underground and uh, and they have done something uh, really breakthrough and um, and then what uh, what you share with me Arak it really reflects what I read in the uh, uh, frequency responses of these uh, loudspeakers and we are going to go through them in the next video so thank you guys and uh, thank you for uh, uh, because it, it was you my subscribers who brought cube audio to my attention and uh, thank you for sharing about it and, and and i'm truly overjoyed to see something so special so everyone have a wonderful day uh, bye bye.